here are my batteries. I have purchased 4,000 cells from Alarm Hookup on eBay. These are 2200 milliamp hour cells and are supposed to be genuine LG. So this cell, it's the first one that appears to have any sort of damage on the outside of it. Hoping that's a rarity. Okay, so if you can see that right there, that wire's actually pinched. This is my last box to open, so I figured I'd show you how these were actually packed. So first thing to notice is that there is some tape here on all the boxes, but it's not sealed. So these are resealed boxes. All of them have just a little bit of bubble wrap, two or three layers. On a couple of the boxes, they were squished out, but that bubble wrap is just on one side. The bottom side is just flat up against cardboard. The batteries themselves are all in individual sections within the cardboard, so uh, there's no way for them to touch each other or short out. I haven't seen any sort of failure in this cardboard packaging, so I think all cells are reliably separated from one another during shipment. So I think at this point, let's take some voltage measurements and see where these packs lie. So here is all the cells, all voltage tested and laid out. There ended up being several different configurations. Here on the right, this is the first set. Then here you can see with the green wrapped piece, there's another set. More light colored silver is another set. Then there's this large blue set. And then lastly, there's four different variations on the blue. And then there's this guy. This was the lowest pack voltage that uh, was tested, and not only that, it was actually giving me some inconsistent voltage readings. Uh, I inspected the pack and I turned over, and then I see at the bottom here there's this gouge. I'm not sure if this is actually damaged or not, but considering the low voltage and the gouge, I think I'm going to put this in a safe place for tonight, just because I don't quite trust it right now. Okay, so this is the problem cell. Uh, it was the lowest voltage by a very large margin, I think uh, 4 volts even. 34-ish was the worst I saw, 34 and some change. But not only that, it's, it has some very odd uh, measurements going on, so uh, I'm actually going to show you what that's doing. Crap, no. 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 You mustn't make me look like a fool. Why are you behaving so well right now? There we go. What is this? Do you see this? What is this? It's disconnect and reconnect. Oh, it bumped up 30, now back down to 25, 24. What is this? What is this? Look, it, it just keeps on dropping. What if I swap the polarity? What is happening? How about we break this thing open and see what's actually causing that? BMS is not uh, glued or affixed to the batteries uh, strongly. It's only adhered through this piece of tape. As for the gouge on the outside, uh, I do see a tiny little nick right here, but I don't think that that is deep enough to have caused any issues. These heat shrinks are totally oversized and really inappropriate for what they're doing. I don't see any physical damage. So let's reconnect the BMS and take a couple of measurements because the BMS actually sits between uh, the battery and the connector that I was testing. It. Oh. So this is the BMS actually kicking in to protect the cells, I think, because this is right on the limit. I think of that 3.0 volt per cell limit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is hook up this resistive load. Ready? 
So that's exactly what is happening here. The voltage of this pack is down at the bottom threshold for the BMS. As soon as I put a load on it, the voltage droops. That drooping is what's causing the BMS to kick in and protect the cells from low voltage conditions. I actually consider this a good sign for this pack. So if the pack was discharging itself due to a faulty cell or some faulty condition, then it would actually droop below the cutoff voltage. This pack has been connected perhaps for a test or some other situation and the voltage has actually been ran all the way down to its cutoff voltage. Ew. Let's get these dangling participles out of the way. Maybe if I pull it slowly. Ugh. Nah, this is just gonna be ugly. But there we go, there's 20 cells. All of them appear to be the same cells. They are LGDAMF11865. So how about we break open another cell of a different type and see what it's got in it. Okay, so some unfortunate news here. So the general construction is relatively the same. Check that out. So the glue actually fuses the two wrappers together. All these cells will need to be rewrapped. Every single one of them. The news could be worse for sure, but that is still a little bit frustrating to see, especially considering how ridiculously easy this first pack came apart. And while I'm not an expert, it looks and feels pretty genuine to me.